Welcome to the Ryan Water Sports Drive. We make a stop with the West Side Warriors and play-by-play -play man John Zax joins us uh, for a big weekend series for the Warriors. Let's just first talk about the, the inconsistency that this team has seen lately. How come? Well, if anything, it's almost consistently been down. Uh, you know, they've been playing pretty well at times. They went on a 10-game losing streak, Ryan, that I'm sure you know, and a lot of those were overtime losses, one-goal losses, and so you start to wonder why. Like, we feel like we're playing well and not getting the results. What's going wrong? And I think there were really two things going wrong for this team, one of which was goaltending. They just weren't getting that big save when they needed it. Um, and I know you want to ask me about trades, and we'll get into that in a moment, because they did bring in a new goaltender, and I think that's helped give them some, some stability between between the pipes. The other problem has been goal scoring and that's something that I mean how do you teach guys to score goals? How do you generate goals? I mean their power play has been struggling five on five they've been a terrific team just not putting the puck in the net and so I think those are the two things you look at as well as injuries which really have ravaged this hockey club. It's got to be confidence though, right? I mean you lose so many games in overtime one goal games you don't have a good power play it's got to be confidence. For sure you start squeezing your stick a little tighter and you start to think here we go again I mean there were games in that stretch where they would absolutely dominate a team in the third period of a tied game puck would come into their zone once and it was in the back of their net and you just n imagine what's going through the players minds oh here we go again and it's so hard to get yourselves back up and come back and try to tie that game and if you go to overtime are you filled with confidence no although yeah. having said that I was impressed with how the team really stayed on focus and kept the bit between the teeth and do it kept the bit between the teeth and really kept working. How about the trades now? Let's talk about that because you brought in a new goaltender that's helped. Dwayne Rodriguez has been fabulous. Uh, the first game he played was loss number 10 of that 10 game losing streak and it was interesting. It went to double overtime. He made an incredible save on Regan Sakila, a real sharpshooter for Merritt with about a minute left in the game. The save they hadn't been getting yeah, yeah. and the Warriors won it in double overtime and ended up forfeiting that game on a technicality because Rodriguez, a new 20 year old goaltender, had taken the replace of the outgoing Steve Racine, their former goaltender tender both of them still 20 year olds both of them still carded the team had six 20 year olds they lost their 10th in a row on a technicality one more real just bad blow to this hockey team a blow that can't happen and the whole team all knows that it. it was a mistake that uh, you know the coaching staff and the organization made but one more blow against the team but yeah Dwayne Rodriguez came in that game and you could go into the room after the game at that point of course the players didn't know they were going to forfeit and the smiles on their faces was something else to watch they had a goalie who'd make this big save they won a game in overtime put an end to the losing streak on home ice the team felt so good so that was a big trade for this team and I think the guys are really rallying around, around Dwayne Rodriguez and he's been dynamite uh, the other big trade for this team was sending out interesting their leading point getter at the yeah. time for a team that's struggling to score goals it seems a weird one sending Tyler Krauss uh, to Okotoks in the AJHL and bringing in Marcus Basara, a guy who had just been flipped from Vernon to Okotoks, didn't even play a game in the AJ before being brought back here to the BC League. But I think Ryland Furster just likes this player. He's seen him over a couple of years in Vernon. He won a championship in Midget with the Prince Albert Mintos, a lauded program in Saskatchewan. And it, I think that uh, Coach Furster thinks that Basara is just a, a good two-way, gritty, winning hockey player. Well, why the move for Kraus? Why into Alberta, of all places? And... Ryland Furster is the first one to tell you he's not the guy who's going to make a move just for the sake of making a move. He felt that this was going to give his team a better look, make them a little bit more gritty, make them a little bit better two-way, and I guess he just felt that Vassar was going to be a better playoff type guy should they get there. And let's face it, with the way this team is going right now, they're going to have to start playing playoff type hockey come January. Yeah, well this weekend maybe, because you have Vernon, you have Prince George, uh, winnable games in the standings as the teams are just above you in the standings. What do you expect to see from those two teams? Yeah, they're sitting in fourth and fifth the Vipers, I mean the three-time defending champs as you know and they're always a tough team to play although having said that Vernon has been on a slide lately I believe they've lost six in a row as we do this and uh, things you know they've been making some trades as well and just trying to get some stability you know Jason Williamson who's taken over that program this year worked under Mark Ferner the outgoing coach for all those championship teams and it seemed like it was going to be business as usual at least that was the mantra from Vernon and it started that way but they've been falling off a little bit as of late and Westside has had a couple of very close games against the Vipes just this year and just one goal losses again. As for Prince George, that's on Saturday and uh, you know the Warriors played them twice in Prince George last weekend, part of a, a four game in five day haul that also included travel up to Northern BC and the Warriors split those games, identical 3-2 score lines and uh, the second game, the Sunday game that they lost, you know there were a couple of bad bounces again, a goal called back that would have made it three zip west side in the second period so uh, you know the Warriors know that Prince George certainly is beatable but like you say, I mean this uh, playoff race is starting to slip out of hand 
again, you don't really necessarily want to say, okay, well, we'll just try to bide our time until Christmas and come out in January full of vim and vigor. You can't wait that long. You can't afford to give up your last four games or whatever it is until Christmas. How is the Hockeyville bid? supported, helped, hurt the Westside Warriors? I think at this point it's just uh, maybe drawing a little bit of attention to this team and this community, but I think as things build and snowball and as a lot of the other bids around the country start to drop out and people start to pay more attention, I think it can be only be a good thing. I mean, a lot of the players are on board. You look at a guy like Max French, who's an alternate captain this year. He's a West Kelowna guy, a heart and soul player for this team. Another guy that was injured for a month and has just returned and been an impact player right away. I mean, you look at a guy like him and he's so willing to do anything in the community and he goes out there and that helps to get the community excited. I mean, I've been into schools with Frenchie and the kids know who he is, the parents know who he is and I think that's the type of thing that this can only help the relationship between the Warriors and the community and that only helps business, puts bums in the seats and at the end of the day that helps the team win. John, thanks for doing this. Good luck this weekend. Thanks for having me. John Zax, he's the voice of the West Side Warriors. Catch him this weekend as the Warriors play two home games right here at Royal LePage Place. Thanks for watching the Ryan Water Sports Drive.